Welcome to Take 5, your five-minute inspirational message from Solid Rock Drada. Uh, I'm Nick Park, and I'm taking us through a series of messages called the Biblical Game of Thrones. We're looking at the kings of Israel and Judah, and we're seeing how God was at work despite all of the very human politicking and conspiring that went on behind uh, the thrones. Now, some, some of you might be finding this just a little bit confusing, trying to keep track of the two different kingdoms. Because, of course, under Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, Israel had split into two. And so you had the northern kingdom with ten of the tribes, with its uh, capital city, uh, w would eventually be in Samaria, and it was called Israel. And then you had the tribe of Judah and Benjamin and the Levites as well. And they had their capital city in Jerusalem, and they were called Judah. And so sometimes people get a little bit confused. Well, it's going to get a little bit more confusing now, and I'll tell you why. Because in our last Take 5, we looked at King Jehoram of uh, Judah. Now, as he came to the throne, round about the same time, another king of the same name came to the throne of Israel. Uh, he was also called Jehoram, but thankfully, some of our Bibles in their translations call him Joram, just to make a distinction between the two, so Jehoram and Joram. Now, you might have said, hang on, we've got two kingdoms right next door to each other, related to each other, and now they're being led by kings with the same name. Are, you, are we supposed to believe this kind of thing really happens? Well, of course it does. That's, that's what real life is like. You know, if it was fiction, in fiction, you never have characters with the same names. Think about soap operas. If you have somebody in a soap opera called Paul, you're not going to have somebody else called Paul because they, they don't want to create that confusion. But in real life, you often get people with similar names. In our church, if you say to me, Sean said this, I'm going to have to say, which Sean? Because we've got several Seans. The same if you say, Mary, so Mary did this. I'd say, which Mary? And uh, in fact, here in Ireland, of course, we had a situation back in 2016 with the European Football Championships where you had two Irish teams participating in the tournament. You had the Republic of Ireland and you had Northern Ireland. And just to make foreign journalists get even more confused, the Northern Irish manager was uh, Martin O'Neill. Uh, oh, sorry, the Northern Irish manager was Michael O'Neill and the Southern uh, Republic of Ireland manager was Martin O'Neill. So these kind of things happen in real life. And so you had King Jehoram in Judah and King Joram in Israel. And it's this King Joram we want to think about because he was another son of Ahab and Jezebel. And he uh, succeeded his elder brother Ahaziah to the throne because Ahaziah had no child of his own. And Jezebel was still alive at this time. Now, actually, Joram of Israel was a little bit better than the ones that had gone before him. And that wasn't saying very much because we're talking Ahab and Jezebel. Um, so he actually stopped the Baal worship, but he still kept the idolatry of worshipping the golden calves uh, at Dan and Bethel. And so because of that, he still came under the judgment of God. And he still came on the judgment that had been declared against Ahab's household. Now, he did actually experience a miracle whenever he joined up with Jehoshaphat to go to war. And because of Jehoshaphat, uh, God gave a, a, a miracle, uh, worked through the prophet Elisha, which actually benefited Joram as well. But then there was a guy called Jehu, who was commissioned by Elisha to fulfill God's destruction of Ahab's household. And this Jehu, uh, he basically was a general in the army and uh, he decided that uh, after he'd been commissioned he knew that God was going to use him to overthrow the king and become become king himself so he jumped in his chariot and drove furiously to Jezreel and uh, the, the king uh, Joram he said who, who is it that's coming they said well we can tell that it's Jehu because he's driving like a maniac so Jehu was obviously known for it being for somebody who drove like a maniac. I know a few Jehus in the church today. And Jehu, whenever he came up there and, and was outside the walls of Jezreel, uh, Joram went out to face him in battle and Jehu killed him. And uh, he killed Joram 
and he had his body thrown into the vineyard of Naboth. Remember Naboth? Remember the guy who was, oh, deceitfully used and uh, Ahab and Jezebel managed to conspire against him and have him falsely accused and falsely executed and to seize his property. And now their second son and the last king in their line was now killed and his dead body was thrown onto the ground in the former vineyard of Naboth to show that God was bringing justice to pass. And what this tells me is that God is a God of justice. Now, thank God he's a God of grace. Thank God he's a God of mercy. But he's also a God of justice. And sometimes people think they've got away with things. It seems like uh, judgment doesn't come to pass. But God is a God of justice. And God will avenge the innocent. And God will vindicate them. And he did that with the death of Joram and the end of Ahab's uh, dreadful royal household. I pray that we will remember that. Sometimes there are times whenever we, uh, we suffer some harm, we suffer some damage, and we think, does God see? Does God care? Does God really work righteousness? The Lord does. It might be delayed, but our God is a God of righteousness. Let's remember that as we move forward. Uh, be blessed today. Join us again next time for another Take 5, your five-minute inspirational message from Solid Rock Drogheda.